Hi, it's Kim McGrath from Expressions of the Universe with your mid-April forecast, stars and cards, cards for all zodiac signs, and we're coming into eclipse season, so things are about to heat up, and I thought that it was appropriate for us to be doing a video so that I could tell you where these eclipses could be hitting. So I'm only going to focus on the first eclipse. It is a hybrid eclipse, at, which is pretty rare, once every 10 years, I believe. Hybrid being it comes in as a penumbral eclipse, and then it turns into a total solar eclipse, which is pretty weird because it's usually, you know, one or the other. So that within itself, I think, makes it even stronger, not to mention it's a black moon. Black moon is a second new moon in any given sign, um, not even particularly in a month, but it's in the sign. So the first new moon was at zero degrees of Aries about a month ago, and now we're coming into 29 degrees of Aries right before it moves into Taurus. And so it's pretty powerful. It's really kicking off another 19 year cycle, which I'll talk about in a moment. I have these, the Dream Weavers Oracle cards from Colette Baron Reed. This was one of my newest decks. I still really don't know all of the cards, so I may need to use the book, but I'll pull cards for all Zodiac signs. If you saw the April beginning of the month video, I had horoscopes in there and I gave you a little preview of the chart. Also my crystal or my stone of this time, this is a treat by the way, just acquired them right before recording this, something I've never seen or heard of before. And I thought that I pretty much have every type of stone and crystal there is. This is called Orca Agate. Some people like to call it the forgiveness stone, but doesn't it look like an Orca whale? And it is a really beautiful form of blue chalcedony. Agates help us ground, stay grounded. This is a really wonderful throat chakra stone. It's ocean energy. I am feeling very beachy today or over the last few weeks. And one of my friends actually even gave me some fossilized sand dollars. So when I saw these, I thought, oh, beach theme. And I'm doing everything in pairs because we're setting new intentions. We're setting intentions for this Aries energy. Aries is the kickoff of brand new cycles. And my intention is that I will find a boyfriend. Um, that's what I'm trying to manifest with the new moon. And there's like druzy pockets in here. So I'm going to post more about this on Facebook and Instagram during the week. Even though I haven't really been on, I have been doing a little posting. Um, but these are pretty important. I want to tell you all about the energy. I'll probably also blog about them. What do I have? What do I have? I'm going to bring up chart or my slides. I should say, bring that up, get that going. Let me share my screen. All right. So what I've been doing lately is a beginning of the month video and then a mid month video because it'll cover the new moon and full moon. And that's what I have had the capacity for doing. Um, I don't want to just leave everything, but I've been really focusing a lot on myself and healing myself. I was spiraling out of control and wasn't happy. I'm happy to say I'm doing pretty fantastic. 
still drinking my coffee. So here's the mid-April 2023. And I condensed this slide from the beginning of April slide, took out everything up to this point. So April 20th, I believe that is Thursday, April 20th, depending on where you are in the world, this might be coming in on Wednesday, April 19th. You'll have to check your time zones. A good portion of the world, it will be April 19th. So we have the new moon in Aries at 29 degrees, 50 minutes, 12, 13 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. It's the second new moon in Aries, and it's referred to as a black moon. We also have the solar hybrid eclipse with the black moon, a rare hybrid eclipse as it begins. Oh, I wrote it begins as an annular. Maybe I was wrong. Um, it's either beginning as an annular or prenumbral. This must be correct. So maybe it's beginning as an annular and then it transforms into a total. And then right after this, like very, like within an hour, the sun moves into Taurus. So happy birthday, Taurus. And I love that because I'm a Taurus rising. So things are getting juicy. However, there's always a however. That's my... Um, East Coast accent. However, Mercury will be going retrograde in the sign of Taurus. It is in its shadow, has been, I believe, since April 7th. In the sign of Taurus, a lot of it has to do with our self-worth, our money, our finances, our material wealth. Um, so we're really going to have to slow things down when it comes to spending. Uh, I am expecting that there could be some turbulence in, in, in economy and finances. Um, yeah, so that's what, I, what I'm picking up on that. Now, Taurus is typically ruled by Venus. Venus is currently in Gemini. Mercury's in Taurus. So they have what is called a um, now I can't even think of it. Mutual reception. Oh my goodness. Am I getting that old that I'm starting to forget things? It's a mutual reception. So when you have a planet in the ruler of another planet, but that other planet's in the ruler of that planet, it's like they're, they're talking to each other. So even though they're not in their own home sign, they have a mutual reception between the two of them. So with Venus, the sign of money and love, being in Gemini, the twins too, of everything, things can go two different ways. Um, and then Mercury, you know, the thinker, the conversationalist, the merchant is in the sign of Taurus. You also have to remember Mercury is the trickster. So we're not really sure how this is going to go. And I have to mention that Uranus, the planet of chaos and unexpected events, is in Taurus. So, hmm. All right. Then we have Earth Day. And then I just wanted to jot down a couple things that are coming up. And uh, for May, we will be experiencing Pluto retrograde. It'll move back into Capricorn. So Capricorns, beware. Full moon in Scorpio with a lunar eclipse, Venus will enter Mar uh, Cancer and Mars will enter Leo. So that's going to be pretty juicy. That's going to be really lovely, actually. Nice energy. All right. So this new moon eclipse, I'm recommending we purge and declutter. We set our intentions we look deep into ourselves because it is Aries energy and our relationships. The opposite of Aries is Libra, which rules our relationships. Uh, with Mercury in Taurus, even though going retrograde, we're being asked to commit to something or someone. We could also break up with people. So you gotta remember there's two sides 
to every planet, every aspect, there's two sides. Uh, with solar eclipses, you can expect epiphanies, revelations. Think about this as like the earth is turning off its, its lamp, its night light, turning it off, turning it back on. Also think about when you reboot your computer or you know some type of an electronic that isn't working. And what do you do? You unplug it like uh, on my internet modem. Sometimes I have to unplug it. I have to wait for 30 seconds or a few minutes and then plug it back in so that it reboots itself. That's kind of like what a solar eclipse is like. So, you know, we go into the darkness and then the lights come on and we're like, oh wait, I didn't see that standing there in front of my face when the lights come on, when, when the electronics get rebooted. Um, that's where those epiphanies, revelations come from. Things that were always right in front of you that maybe we weren't aware of, they will start to come out in the light. Now, it doesn't have to happen on that day. You know, give it about six months on either side. So you may have had revelations leading up to this over the last six months. And it is in a cardinal sign. Aries is a cardinal sign, meaning it uh, launches new beginnings. Whereas in two weeks, with the lunar eclipse being in the fixed sign of Scorpio, um, those are more powerful because that energy and the things that happen last forever. All right. Oh, wait a minute. I don't know how that happened. Did, I may have to pause this. I don't know where my, my screens went. Pause, share. Now I'm going to, hold on a second, get my crap together. I don't know what happened, but somehow my, my slides got shuffled. So before we look at this chart, for the eclipse and the new moon. I wanted to remind everyone of what the house is, the general meaning of each astrological house is. <clears throat> you can also see that on the outside, hopefully you know your zodiac sign symbols. So Aries rules the first house, Taurus the second, so on so forth, all the way around. And these are the themes that we will each be dealing with, depending on where this shows up in your chart. And it's very similar to the full moon that we had two weeks ago. So it's keeping theme. The other really interesting thing, let's move on to the chart. So here we have the new moon in Aries at 29 degrees, 50 minutes. It's also the solar eclipse. What's really cool is that 19 years ago, April 19th of 2004, we had this same new moon and solar eclipse. So think back to April of 2004, you can do six months on either side. What was happening in your life at that time? This is an upgrade from that period. It could be, it could look total opposite because at that time where we have Sagittarius rising in the sky right now, Gemini was rising at that time. So we're kind of doing an opposite look Within ourselves, Aries is about ourselves, the me, 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 me. And we're doing a flip of that. The other cool thing is this eclipse is kicking off a 15-year highlight of eclipses in Australia. So if you're in the United States, you're not going to see this eclipse. I'll tell you that right now. Um, 
I'm not sure about the lunar eclipse that's coming in two weeks, but we're going to talk more about that in a week or so. Uh, what else did I write down? So yeah, Australia, I'm expecting like we're going to start to see a lot of things happening in Australia or hear more things about the land down under. This could also include New Zealand, South Africa. Um, and yeah, go back to April 19th of 2004. What was going on in your life? during that time. If you're not, if you weren't born, then this is kicking off a brand new 19 year cycle. And if you are more than 38 years old, you may even be able to go back another 19 years. So these eclipses happen at the same exact degree every 19 years, no matter what eclipse it is. The one that we're gonna have in two weeks, we can look back to May of 2004, what was going on then in your life? Because that lunar eclipse is going to have a similar flavor. Um, mm -mm -mm. So did, oh, also too, 19 years ago, the new moon and the eclipse were taking place right up here in right on the cusp of the 10th and the 11th house. So if we go back, we could see it's about achievements in the world, authorities, public life, recognition, career, vocation. Um, dreams, hopes, and wishes live in the 11th house. So do our deepest friendships, but it's also humanitarian ideals, global awareness. And what I was thinking back about, just looking at the other planets, we had the Gemini rising, the north node was in Taurus, south node in Scorpio, similar to how it is now. The north node was squaring Neptune in Aquarius, illusions and money. So it felt very career oriented. Pluto was in Sagittarius, Saturn was in Cancer, Venus and Mars were in Gemini. And it just felt like like that 10th house was saying about achievement, recognition, killing ourselves, you know, to get ahead in the world for what? And here we are 19 years later, taking a good look at that and saying, um, I don't want to live that life anymore. Like, mm, at least that's the way I'm seeing it. So freedom and adventure with this Sagittarius rising new beginnings and revelations with the trine to the new moon and the sun in Aries. Expect financial upsets, arguments, disagreements, unexpected announcements, unexpected passings. These eclipses that we're coming into, um, there are a lot of world leaders and those famous, those that are famous, that could be passing. And for some reason, and I don't know why, Jane Fonda came into, like I had a vision about her and I wanted to look at her chart to see, you know, what her chart looks like because I was getting like a hit that something could be happening with her. Joe Biden, for sure. Um, Vladimir Putin, um, keep your eye on Trump because his health doesn't look good when I look at his chart. So some pretty big world leaders could be on their way out. Interestingly enough, is that King Charles is having his coronation on the lunar eclipse in two weeks. And I call him the Scorpio King. Like, And they definitely have astrologers that plan their special events based on the astrology. So we're going to look at that over the next two, within two weeks before the lunar eclipse. So yeah, unexpected passings. Be careful about overindulgence, overdosing, because this Neptune with Saturn, a very powerful eclipse. Um, there's a lot of escapism with Neptune in Pisces, with Saturn in Pisces. Saturn wants reality to shine. 
and Pisces wants to escape reality by drugs and alcohol and maybe overeating, overspending, like do having escapism uh, tactics, but there's, yeah, there's a really big indicator about overdosing here. And I'm expecting weather disruptions, seismic turmoil, you know, we could hear of like earthquakes or whatever, tsunamis, tornadoes, hurricanes, we're coming into a pretty volatile time, especially with Uranus being here, uh, Uranus and uh, Pluto even, Pluto at zero degrees in Aquarius. And then indecision, definitely indecision and mean girl syndrome I was picking up. Like these are just things that I had written down. So, and I put in some pretty big indicators. We have Pluto getting ready to go retrograde, moving back into Capricorn in the second house. So that says to me, there's money issues happening in the world, definitely, which relates to our own personal finance. We're right on the cusp of Taurus. That's money again. And it's fifth house. It's our pleasure. It's our fun romance. It's our children. It's our creativity. So we could get some really great epiphanies from this. If you are a creative person, for sure. Um, but, you know, you're going to have to do it on a shoestring budget. This, is, this whole chart is saying to me, put... Buckle, buckle up your seatbelt and hold on because the roller coaster is getting ready to take off. We have Venus and Gemini in the sixth house here. And the sixth house is the world's overall mental health. It's our health, nutrition, our daily life. Venus, it is a benefic planet, but it is in Gemini. And so I feel as though we could see sickness, illness happening and then you've got Mars here in Cancer. It is in its fall. It's in its one of its worst places in the seventh house of relationships. So, you know, that's where the arguments come in. The Aries is all about me, 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 me. We've got Chiron over here at 16 Aries conjuncting Jupiter. So we are taking a look at those inner wounds, right? And we're having to dig deep into our own shadow sides to uncover the other side of the coin. Remember, there's always two sides of the coin. How are you living? You know, are you treating people kindly? Are you self-centered, self-focused, or more of a humanitarian type of fairness, balance, beauty, harmony? That's at least what this midheaven at 17 degrees of Libra, it's saying, you know, you better get real with the self and the divine. Everybody needs to come together. This is pretty powerful. I think that's all I had for you as far as the chart. So I could stop sharing. Let's do the cards. I don't want this to be a long drawn out video. You can go back to the April 2023 video, see your horoscope and the cards that I pulled for that for the month. This is for specifically for the eclipse. So you want to pay attention to your sun sign, rising sign, and moon. Maybe any stelliums, clusters of planets you have in your chart. That's why it's important to know your chart. It gives these a really good shuffle and a cut. Start with Aries, as always. And it is, we're wrapping up Aries season with a black moon and eclipse. That's pretty cool. All right, so let's see, Aries. We have time to dance around the sun. But how perfect is that? Time to dance around the sun. And it's card number 37. So that to me speaks about ascended masters and the, and the divinity 
and in order to manifest. So 37, I'm just gonna use, I'm just gonna get like the little clip from each of these to give you a better meaning. So Aries, thinking about <clears throat> this happening in, in the fifth house of pleasure, your inner child, your children, your romance, your creativity. This is victory after hard work, celebration of achievements, having the advantage to win. So this is like a win-win for the Aries. I feel like this is really great energy. It's kicking, kicking off your year for sure. Um, when it's time to dance around the sun, you can be sure of sweet victory in all of your endeavors. So I don't know if you saw, but there's there's a bad storm going on outside and I just saw lightning. I hope I don't lose power. All right, Taurus, suns, risings, and moons. You have let your dreams be woven true. Card number five. So some changes definitely need to be made when I see number five. And this says, the card of the dream weavers, co-creation, partnership with divine powers, trusting your dream will be in alignment with your soul's destiny, surrendering your will to a higher power. Okay. And definitely looks like there's grounding needed, getting out into nature. Um, I love all the critters in this. And just real quick, it says human beings often believe they create their world through the power of determination and will alone, hard work and effort, striving, ambition, focus, imagination, and desire are all worthy components, but they are not the only ones. That's why you have to connect to that divinity, like something higher and greater than yourself and trust that. You're going to be led in the right direction. Gemini, if the rivers flow this way, card number four. Card number four talks about finding your place of belonging. It also talks about <clears throat> that place of belonging being the place where you can create at your highest level for pure, simple joy and happiness of it all. It seems as though you may be living, leaving a situation, Gemini, in order to find better pastures. This says the importance of going with the flow, feeling the sense of being one with the currents of life, trusting you will never drown as your destiny wants you to go this way. The flow state is the way of surrendering and trusting the benevolent forces of life. It's surprising that we don't spend more time in that energy of surrender and just allowing to happen. And that's really kind of what I've been doing a lot lately, being so uber present and just allowing whatever to show up as it shows up. And I'm really enjoying myself. Cancers, when Coyote calls your name, and it is card number three. Now, you know, you saw me shuffle and cut. So I don't know. They are showing up the way they're supposed to. Card number three does talk about Ascended Masters, for sure. And I'm thinking like when Coyote calls your name, when you start to hear and see synchronicities, and omens showing up, you better pay attention. This says divine detours, so obstacles in the way, which I believe did come up for cancers before. Divine detours, the value of not getting what you want or not getting what you think you want. Discovering greater treasure when you are forced to change course. Sometimes you find yourself confused about your direction. You may have been so sure you were meant for this situation, that situation. You know, you love this job, you love this, you love this job, you love this thing, and yet you're forced to walk away. 
the rug got pulled out from under you. Consider it a divine detour and know that there's a reason why that happened. And it's so sucky to even think that, but I swear you'll look back in hindsight and you'll be like, oh, makes sense. Leo, Leo, card 44, 44 is my favorite number. So, you know, card four is about creation, creativity, finding your place of being, but this is, this is a master number 44. So like this is that energy on steroids. This says weavers know that all is God. Well, you know, I don't particularly always like that word, but weavers know that all is that higher power, that higher being, the universe, right? Card number 44. in the grand scheme of things. So that's pretty cool. That looks like a whale with the all-knowing eyes. I don't know, some of the cards, the artwork's pretty cool, but it's a little creepy. Um, this is the last card of the deck, by the way, which is interesting. So Leo's, the conscious universe is the source of supply. Spirit is fundamental to life. The mystical is the primary reality. The weavers know that all is the universe, do you? This is a profound magical time in your life and it's important that you recognize your relationship with the higher power, with your higher power, your higher guides as your essential, as essential and primary. So I think this is really good for Leos. You know, I have Leo Moon. This is pretty much saying the universe doesn't revolve around you. You, you know, you have to go around the universe or, you know, you're not the, you're just this little speck on this planet. Um, but you have to trust that whatever is orchestrated for you is perfect and divine. And I really think it's like a reality check of saying, you know, once you realize that how, how insignificant each of us really are in the grand scheme of everything, that's when life will unfold. That makes sense. All right, Virgos, my little, little, my little Virgos. Well, you have card number 31. When the bird sings gratitude, that's adorable. So number 31 to me, it is those ascended masters showing up. Um, and also it's about your heart, your healing, your yourself, the love that you have in your heart, um, which leads you to your place of being belonging and the place where you are most creative and connected. That's what I get from, from this card 31. Obviously it's asking you to shout out about gratitude, right? So Virgos, gratitude as the essential power of manifestation. I can attest to that. The law of praise, saying thanks in advance for goodness. Right now, you're being reminded of the quickening power of the law of praise, saying thank you before actually receiving those good things you desire in life is a magical sacred act. And you may have been taught to say grace over your food, blessing it and giving it thanks for nourishing your body. Most people know to say thank you after receiving something and expressing gratitude will help you manifest enormously. But you know, it also helps when you think about the things that you're grateful for, it helps to get you out of a lower vibration that you may be ha hovering in, which is preventing you from manifesting. Any kind of grumble, complaints, um, you know, that keeps you in that lower vibration, therefore blocking manifestation. 
Hmm. Okay, Libra. Let's get this show on the road. Libra, card number 30. Beyond your fears, the weavers dance. I would say that's getting out of your comfort zone. So 30, ascended masters, putting up boundaries. So allowing your guides, your ancestors to show up for you, guide your way, but you've got, you've got to put up some healthy boundaries, Libras. Definitely because, you know, This is about relationships. We're taking a big look at relationships during this eclipse. And so that really, that makes sense to me is like, do you have healthy boundaries? Are you saying no when you mean no? Or are you saying yes when you wanna say no? All right, so this says, the negative effects of prolonged fearful thoughts, moving out of flight or fight or flight, freeze, being courageous in spite of your fears. Beyond your fears, the dream weavers dance, weaving the beautiful patterns of your life into the great weaving of all life. But fear, although a worthy self-protective emotion, engages your fight, flight, freeze response. And that's a trauma response. It will prevent you from everything so knock it off libras time to uh time to do it despite your fears okay scorpio 22 another master number and it says surfing rainbow surfing rainbows on the moon that's pretty cool so ascended masters this is about relationships and coupling with with another. Um, this is coming together, co-creation. I love that for the Scorpios, because I know a lot of Scorpios that are very um, relationship oriented right now. All right. So this says the power of imagination when led by inspiration and intuition, the source of innovative thinking and being playful. Yeah. Don't be so serious. You're at a place, Scorpios, where no matter what your inquiry, the answer is the same. It's time to be playful. Let curiosity lead. Allow your imagination to help you dream without limits. Sagittarius, you have num card number two. So it is about our emotions. Definitely, it's all about... Mm, the way you feel. So get out of the head, get into the heart. And it says, let the fire dragon sleep. Ooh. Yeah, no poking the fire dragons, okay? Um, especially, so what I think of is, you know, someone hurts you, you're going to go back and, and poke and prod and provoke. This New moon and eclipse is trining whatever you have in Sagittarius. So it, it could be firing you up. This is a warning to stay out of drama, respecting the consequences of possible dangerous outcomes, dealing with contrary people. Great. Fire dragons are powerful and uncontrollable. By their very nature, they cause destruction and damage that can take a long time to heal from. It's card number two, the emotions. These creatures like their rest. They don't like to be awakened by a stranger. When this card arrives, it's a gentle warning that whatever situation or person is inviting you to dance with anger, jealousy, or resentment must be avoided. Whoa. Capricorns, your card is card number one, and it says, when the storm spirits play, when the storm spirits play, so card number one is about your yourself, your heart, the way you love, the way you love yourself, the way you don't love yourself, the way you love others, well, you know, the way you love others is a reflection of the way that you do or don't love yourself. This says, understanding how to navigate divine chaos, 
clear the air, stir the pot, scatter the seeds, bring new possibilities. You're being asked to surrender your need to control outer circumstances, Capricorn. Think about it. Pluto is getting ready to retrograde and move back into Capricorn. You're going to have a need or feeling to control. Get over it. Surrender to it. Um, and this is just a desire for you to feel more certain in uncertain times. Surrender. Aquarius. Oh my gosh. I pulled this the other day for my Aquarian daughter when she had a question. So I love this and I already know what this one means. It is card 10 manifestation. When you love yourself and you put boundaries up around the things that you're loving and protecting, all the diamonds in the sky. And this is saying it's time to go and grab that brass ring um, because anything that's happening for the Aquarians, it can happen and come true. So uh, the book says, the little book, Limitless potential and possibilities unique to you and only you. Moving out of limiting beliefs, reaching for the stars and trusting that you will reach them and grab them. Often the only things that separate us from the life we want to live are our beliefs and the inner stories that we tell ourselves about them. And so this is about not telling yourself those stories, knowing that we have limitless possibilities, right? And last but not least, Pisces. I hope I remembered everybody. Um, card number 11, another master number. It's about loving yourself and loving yourself, paying attention to the omens. 1111, make a wish, right? And the 11th house is the house of dreams, hopes, and wishes. And this says, if the fox can't find his tail, I know this card as well. And this card is saying, you know, Pisces, are you running around in circles, chasing your tail over and over again, doing the same things over and over again, getting the same results, yet you still keep doing it. This is um, time for you to knock that off. Uh, this says, Digging deep into your own authentic knowing, avoiding compromise, chasing your tail. It says, if a fox can't find his tail, it might be because he's chasing the wrong things and looking in the wrong direction, one that is unnatural to him. Sometimes you have to find yourself compromising to avoid conflict. If you're coming from a place of fear, that may work in the moment, but yeah, this is saying like, if things just don't sit good with you, stop running around in circles, trying to make things feel better, be better. Just get rid of it. You know, like relationships aren't working out. People aren't working out. Situations and the drama keeps showing up. Why are you running around chasing your tail, right? Okay, let me just make sure I got everybody. So I had Aries, Taurus. Gemini, Cancer, Leo, Virgo, Libra, Scorpio, Sagittarius, Capricorn, Aquarius, and Pisces. All right. I guess that will wrap that up. I hope I remembered to tell you everything I wanted. Uh, stay tuned. Oh, you know what? Maybe I should just pull a card for the week for the anchor, and then I'll post about that. Uh, let's just do that real quick. What did we get? We got card 18. So it's about the self and abundance um, leading us on a new path. And it says what the sunbeams have to show. So that sounds very solar eclipsey, right? What the sunbeams have to show. I don't know this card yet. And it says, this is for all of us, for the collective, for the week. I'll post more about it. Gentle illumination on things needed in order to progress. Solar eclipse, truth revealed, solar eclipse, when you are ready. 
Curiosity, a flicker of an important idea, solar eclipse and new moon. Stay tuned, I'll post, I'll post this um, in my blog and on Facebook and Instagram during the week and about the orca agate and the healing properties for that. Until then, happy new moon. Stay tuned. I will be back with more about the lunar eclipse that's coming up. And um, happy new beginnings. Thanks for watching. Bye.